Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Thus far, we spent a fair bit of time looking at objects that move in circles. You can imagine we have this, this point mass and it's rotating about this pivot and we can find out its position at any given time, its velocity, its acceleration with or without gravity. However, what if we were to take a look at, uh, say, a ball on a pinball ramp? So it has like these two metal guides that kind of guide it along and we I can imagine we have a yellow ball something like right here and it's going along and following this track in some kooky way. In that case, how do we find out the position, velocity, and acceleration? Today we're going to be investigating what it looks like for a particle to move along a defined path. So let's imagine that we do have a particle and we have some sort of a, here we go, x and y, and we have some sort of particle that follows, you know, my pinball ramp like that. And who knows what goes on before and after. And uh, let's say in yellow, we're looking at, um, say, this location right there. We'll call that point P. And we can define the position as a function maybe of time, where something is, as time goes by, some ball is moving along this path, or we can define it as distance. In other words, as the ball moves a certain distance, it moves along this path. And let's go ahead and use that for right now. So the position is a function of the distance that the ball has passed. And if we wanted to know the uh, position, we could use say polar coordinates and we'd have this vector right here, ER, and we'd have this position or vector or this vector right here, E theta. Now we have our position vector. This particle is moving along some sort of weirdly defined arc. How do we understand velocity and acceleration moving along something like that? Well, what we can deal with are straight lines and circles. So let's try it. Let's expand this region right here. Okay, we'll put it down below and we have our yellow point P right here. At this location, point P, this particle is not going in a straight line. Rather, at that point, it's traveling across some imaginary circle. Let's, let's, let's do it in teal. Some circle that has the exact same curvature as that path right there. All right, It has the exact same curvature as that path and at that moment we could pretend that this particle is really moving along a circle. We call this circle an oscillating circle and at this point it defines the type of acceleration and some of the velocity that this particle is experiencing. So at this point we define first an obvious vector. This is going to be uh, ET. This is really our tangential velocity. This tells us how fast the thing's going. But in addition, we're going to define a second vector right here. This is going to be our normal vector for this coordinate frame. For this oscillating circle, it's going to have some radius, and we define that as rho. That's the oscillating radius. With this information, we can write down what the velocity of the particle is. The velocity is equal to its speed in the tangential direction, right here. And if we uh, wanted to know the acceleration, it's going to be the change in the speed. So is it speeding up or slowing down in the tangential direction? And then in addition, we're going to have some sort of centripetal term, and that's going to be v squared over rho in the normal direction. So by looking at the path and using a coordinate frame that moves with a point of interest with some sort of tangential component and some sort of normal component, we can find what the velocity and the acceleration of this is. Now this should look pretty close to what you've seen before, say in polar coordinate frames. In that case, our velocity was equal to r theta dot e theta. So that r theta dot, that's going to be an indication of the tangential velocity in the e theta direction. 
that's very similar to the ET direction, the tangential direction. And the acceleration for circular motion is R theta double dot E theta. Okay, so R theta double dot, that's going to be the change in the velocity. So that's going to be this term right here. It aligns very nicely with that. Minus R theta dot squared E R and you can see how similar these two are right here. This concept right here should come pretty naturally. The one difference here is that in polar coordinates we have a negative in front of the r theta dot, r theta dot squared and in the acceleration we have a positive positive. and if you look at how these unit vectors are defined that explains the difference between the two in a polar coordinate frame the uh, ER is away from the center of the circle and EN is defined towards the center of a circle. The second thing was we saw that if we found some point P we could imagine it going around a circle at this point. That's how it's acting. And if we define ET and EN, these unit vectors, we could find the velocity and the acceleration rather trivially for that point. But this brings up the second big problem is now you have unit vectors that are shooting around some weird path changing direction in some weird way. How do we understand that more fully? We'll discuss that in our next videos as well. I look forward to seeing you on our next video modules when we explore r as a function of s and how to use our moving unit vectors, et and dm.